Please leave a message after the tone. Hello, my name is Adam Sandler, and welcome to So 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 Sandler's, the Sandman Movie Podcast. A gabagoo. Welcome back, everybody, to So, 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 Sandlerus, a movie podcast where we talk about famed t-shirt writer Adam Sandler. This week's movie is the Mixed Notes. It is a 1994 Christmas dark comedy feature film. Joining me today is my co-host, as always, Kerry John Jones, I myself, Matt Wollstenholme. I'd like to thank you. Oh, welcome you all back. How are we going today, Kerry? How many fucking round of votes did you go around then to, uh, to, to, get, <laughs> to get to the point? I got a bit lost there, but you know. Well, we, we need to start writing their stuff down. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good. It's nice to be back uh, re- recording an episode after so long. How long has it been uh, this time, Matt, since recording last? It's been a while. I mean, a whole 12 hours. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, earlier on, uh, Matt and I tried to record this episode. We got about a half hour in and everything just died. Half hour of quality content down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> everything died. But we, uh, we, we powered through and decided to come back and uh, give the people what they want. A podcast on... A Christmas movie starring Steve Martin. Oh, which <laughs> on paper has sound has so much hope. A Christmas movie starring Chris Martin. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Martin. <laughs> well, at least the soundtrack will be good. Yeah. Well, what, what, Steve what, what, Martin what, in a Christmas movie sounds amazing. What uh, this was not. What's what's your favorite Coldplay song? Mine's a scientist. Did you get that reference? <laughs> <laughs> Someone was saying this to me the other day. You know, come... yeah, they bring that up on a do go on all the time. Apparently, there's <laughs> yeah, a clip out there um, of Shane Warne, who tragically passed away last week. He did. Um, on his. Yeah, like a, basically, a day of mourning. It was. On his talk show and. Chris Martin came on and Shane Warne just goes, what's your favourite Coldplay song? And before giving him time to answer, he just goes, mine's a scientist. But apparently <laughs> apparently, it's a collective memory for a couple of uh, Australians, but nobody can seem to find this clip at all. <laughs> so so it's, it's just a mystery Shane Warne clip that's, that may or may not have been made up. Yep, pretty much. No, it's, I only know about it. Drago. I only know about it from other uh, podcasts. <laughs> but yeah, Christmas movies in March. Yeah. But before we get I into know. what uh, top three Christmas movies for you? No, I was saying so. Like one of them for me is definitely Gremlins. Die Hard. Die Hard. Okay. Yep. And did, did did you list the third one that I just missed or? No, no, there is another one that I like throwing in there. I just can't remember what it is. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Come back to me. I'll give you my last one. What are, the, what are your three? Um, mixed Nuts. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. This movie was dog shit. Uh, top three Christmas <laughs> movies. Uh, obviously, Home Alone. Um... Followed by I'll Be Home for Christmas, starring uh, JTT, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, and Jessica Beale when she was like 19. And I remember enjoying that when I was a kid. And then probably third, Jingle All the Way. Jingle All the Way? Yeah. I, w- I went to watch that in a pub nice. two years ago. That was fun. That was very good fun. Cool memory. Yeah. 
Um, I, I'm just going to go with my third one is Die Hard 2. Because fuck oh, it. How does the same shit happen to the same guy twice? Is that a Christmas movie? Are, are they all Christmas movies? I mean, the first two are. Uh, what about... The first two are the same movie, just in a different place. <laughs> Sam Jackson's in the second one, isn't he? Yeah. Has Sam what? Jackson... No, he's in the third one. Oh, he's in the third one. Has Sam Jackson done a film with Adam Sandler? Surely. I was going to say he'd be Chris Rock's dad in a film, but he was Chris Rock's dad in Saw, I think. In the new Saw. Chris Rock in Saw? Yeah, he's in uh, Spiral, the book of Saw. The new Saw oh, movie. I'm not seeing it. No, same. Apparently it's... Crap. Somewhat decent for a Saw movie, <laughs> but probably that means not great. I haven't seen any of the Saw films, I don't think. I've seen uh, Scary Movie 4. That's as close as I get to nice. Saw. <laughs> <laughs> With Dr. Phil. <laughs> oh. Dr. Phil and Jigsaw. <laughs> Okay, yeah. All right, we've we've got way off topic here. <laughs> oh, well, only reason Somehow I brought... got from Christmas movies to Saul. Uh, only reason I brought up uh, Scary Movie 4 is because I still want to do that second podcast with you down the line. Shh, Matt and Kerry. Spoilers. Oh, sorry. Okay, we won't <laughs> m- mention Matt and Kerry <laughs> at the movie movies. But yeah, oh. should we just get into this movie? Yeah, so, mixed nuts, 1994. Hello, this is Lifesavers. Merry Christmas. How may I help you? I have only two months to live. I'm so sorry, sir. Everyone at Lifesavers is with you. May I speak to a woman? Hello, Merry Christmas, if it's all right to say that. What's your name? Catherine. I want to ravish you like a wild animal. (laughs) Now, stop it right this minute. We can't have that sort of thing. Philip's job is solving other people's problems. May I put you on hold while I run to my desk? Uh, You're not calling from a bridge or holding a weapon? No. Good. But unfortunately, he's got problems of his own. I don't know how to say this. My psychiatrist thinks we should break up. I didn't know you were going to a psychiatrist. Well, I'm not actually going to one. I've been dating one for four months. And now it's Christmas. Can we show a little Christmas spirit around here? Merry Christmas! Somebody's not in a holiday mood, I guess. (laughs) A time when the lonely... If you think your husband is having an affair, he is. ...feel most alone. Static again. Hello, hello? I can't hear you. Try clicking the little button. I'm having a problem hearing you. Look, I'm at the end of my rope, and I want to die. Click it, please. Go ahead. I'm very lonely tonight. Is there any chance I could stop by and talk? Well, if you were willing to make a small donation, say perhaps five grand. (gasps) I'm kidding. I came right over. Do you have music? I'm not like you, Philip. I'm not one of those people who's only good on the phone. In my line of work, I deal with all kinds of people. (laughs) None of them are what you might call conventional. (laughs) Dancing with you makes me feel all fluffy. (laughs) Philip? TriStar Pictures presents... I wish there was someone I cared for who cared for me. Are you a professional ukulele player? Oh, no, I'm a writer. What do you write? T-shirts. Steve Martin. My heart is racing, and I'm feeling all nervous and sick. That's the way I felt since the day I met you. I wrote Save the Dolphins. (laughs) In the new comedy... From the director of Sleepless in Seattle. Catherine was uh, very distressed, so naturally I I had to comfort her. Mixed nuts. Hello, Lifesavers, may I help you? May I speak to a woman? You are speaking to a woman. So, Mixed Nuts, 1994, it's American Christmas dark comedy movie, directed by Nora Ephron, based on the 1982 French comedy movie La Père Noël est un adieu. Don't know what that means. Something in French. Co-written by Ephron and her sister Delia, the film features an ensemble cast including Steve Martin, Madeline Kahn, on Rita Wilson, Antonio LaPaglia, Gary Shanley, Juliette Lewis, Adam Sandler, and his first role, Leif Schreiber. Fantastic. Okay. So, Kerry, as you know, famously, we do have a segment we do each week on this podcast. 
Yes, Matt. It's called Curb That Blurb. Oh, I'm I'm so excited so, to hear your plot synopsis I haven't heard before. No, I don't know what you're talking about. This was brand new information. And so, Kerry, I'm going to read you the plot synopsis for this movie, and you are going to let me know if you'd like to let it leave or if you'd like to take it out the front, make it bite the concrete curb, and kick it in the back of the head. Right, okay. Let's go. Right. So, mixed nuts. Christmas Eve in Venice Beach, California. A serial strangler is on the loose. A crisis hotline staffed by three inept counselors faces eviction. Each of these three is lovelorn. They and their non-profit program need a miracle. Their paths cross those of Gracie, Felix, penniless lovers who are fighting with each other and are about to become parents. Chris, an unhappy man in drag. Louie, their loopy songwriting neighbor. A man and his walking his dogs. A veterinarian and their landlord. A Christmas tree, an elevator, a fruitcake, and a pistol also figure in this night before Christmas. Are any miracles in the offing? You know what, Matt? What do you think there, Gary? I think that was a pretty incredible plot synopsis. It made this movie sound interesting with the fruitcake and the pistol and the Christmas tree. The entire cast and their backgrounds. There's a serial killer on the loose. What is this movie? It's like Love Actually slash Friday the 13th. Ooh. Very yeah. uh, very ori- original thoughts from there, Kerry. Something I've uh, definitely not heard before. <laughs> that that popped synopsis made this movie sound a lot more interesting than what this movie actually is. So what are we doing? Are we, are we curbing that blurb or are we letting it walk? If I were to read that online... I would probably come to watch this movie, so I think uh, I, I think we should let that one uh, walk. I, I agree. I think that plot synopsis is better that is more well written than the movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> C- completely agree. So there's no name written. They've just left an email, so I won't I won't read out the email. But Jay Haley, you've done well there. Yeah, thank you very much, Jay Haley. Oh, so right. we're gonna keep that going. So yeah. we've got this movie mixed nuts. That's just not very good. No, not at all. <laughs> not <laughs> even <laughs> slightly. This was shit. This was so just a nothing movie. It, it was more nothing than Shakes the Clown, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like there's this oh, I, I don't understand how we can watch like six movies in a row and one of them has a plot line and what, it's what? not this one Airheads <laughs> from last week yeah Airheads actually had a plot line this does not this like throws in a few plot development points and then never develops on them yeah like yeah. the whole thing is they're getting evicted which is just they don't end up not getting evicted though but they, there's no like, yeah. I, I, I swear, what... at the end of this movie, there's no like resolution to that. They're just no, a slightly happier. Yeah, that that plot point is it's it's kind of resolved, but I'm guessing whether I mean it's it's more like something it... outrageous happens. It's like yeah. obviously a piss take, but despite what happened. Just... They're still no not going to be able to pay rent next month. Yeah, so like they've got out of debt and now they're at zero with no income. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's but, just but, so fucking stupid. But but that debt that they had, somebody else can just pick it up. Surely, I I don't know how, again. I I, I don't know how uh, property and real estate wills. Oh, spoiler alert! Work in. California in 1994. But we're probably thinking too much about it. <laughs> yeah, true. W- way too much uh, for what this movie deserves. But yeah, Matt, do, do you have a do you have any reviews from viewers that you found? Because I wouldn't know what other people think, think of this. Got a couple. We've got some very uh, this is we've got some mixed reviews online actually. So what I'm going to do, I'll just I'll read you these two reviews and then I'll get you to guess the. Um, the Rotten Tomatoes scores, like we, uh, like like always. Okay. 
Do you, do you want me to give the answers I'll... that I remember, or do you want me to make it up again? Ah, you know what? <laughs> Fuck them. We've got no uh... got all the time in the world. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, one of the movie reviews I've got here. So, this is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Steve Martin and Adam Sandler crack me up with transvestite leave. He made me laugh so hard and dancing bit crack up. Guys and girls, put on this movie. You will be laughing so hard. 10 out of 10. I, I think I laughed so? more, more at that review than what I did the actual movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Oh, yeah. Can't argue with that. Uh, Adam Sandler, questionably yep. the person that we're here for. Mm -hmm. This podcast is all about him and his movies. And his characters and whatever. He was the only good part of this movie. He's the only part that made me laugh. But. <laughs> but. They could have and called he's it. Still... They could have called this character Billy Madison. And it would have been exactly the same thing. Adam Sandler was just playing Adam Sandler in 1994. You could have taken this character out of the movie though. And it wouldn't have changed anything. No, it would have just made right. the movie about five minutes shorter. Yeah, <laughs> there'd be uh, less musical numbers, but yeah, that is yeah. true. That is very true. Adam Sandler added nothing to the plot, but he's a rising no, star. No. But you know what? No one added. No one else added anything to the plot either. So. Yeah, that's very true. Okay, I do have a second review here. This okay. is um, this is a a critic's review. Whereas the first one, if you couldn't tell, was a uh, an audience <laughs> review. Who, who's the critic? Do you have the a critics review? Do you have a name there? Oh, I do believe I did. I <laughs> no, they've gone. Okay, never mind. Oh uh, no, I <laughs> I was trying to pull up the tab again, but it's on incognito, so it's gone. It's gone. Oh, was it Siskel and or Ebert? Uh, no, I was gonna get Ebert, but I didn't. This I, was from. I know Ro like Roger the San Ebert. Francisco Chronicle. Oh, right, okay. Because I know Ro Roger Ebert uh, hated this movie. He did. He did not review this well. Yeah. Pretty sure he gave it like a one star. Um, but no, so we've got this one from the San Francisco Chronicle, I believe. Mixed Nuts, opening today at Bay Area Movie Theatres, is laced generously with chuckles, though it neglects one little detail that helps make movies satisfying. A plot. Can't argue with that. That is very. That's a very astute review. And straight to the point as well. Honestly, yeah. Like he, this guy's clearly had about as good as a time as we have with this movie, <laughs> and he's given it a fitting review. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing to it. There's no plot. Fuck. It's this is going to be. It's like difficult to talk about because. It's just nothing happens. Yeah, and, and it's a shame because Nora Ephron, she is a very good Yeah, she's writer. like actually good. And yeah. um this has got to, like people in this are actually like like Steve Martin. Yeah. It's great in other stuff. Like Planes, Chains and Automobiles, one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yeah, cheaper by the dozen two, my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Fuck. And then, like, even Rob Ryan is in this. Like, he's obviously more famous as a di more famous as a director, but he's still yeah. like in quite a bit of stuff as acting roles. Well, Anthony well, Lepagli is in this. He's in quite a bit of other stuff. Then Rita it's Wilson, just... famously, uh... Rita Wilson, who <laughs> she, yeah. So like, the the cast is good, but. You just can't do anything with it. It's weird because this is written by Noah Ephron. Not sorry, not Noah. Noah Ephron as well. Yeah, I, I I honestly don't know what happened with, with this movie. Like, are we going to go with studio and put <laughs> studio ruined it? Yeah, but with, with the cast and with with the director, this should have with a pack. This should have been a lot better. Christmas, Christmas movie with crossings storylines and whatever this should have been some sort of precursor to love actually 
but done so much better. This this yeah. should should be considered a Christmas classic. If you this should be yeah. If you look at it on paper, this should be considered a Christmas classic, one hundred percent. But it did just the complete opposite. Yeah, complete. Like it's just terrible. Complete. Shit. Like there's movies where it's like you know okay it's got some charm, whereas like it it's bad, but it's it's kind of charming how bad it is. This is just shit. Because this is like actually supposed to be good, and it just is terrible. Yeah, I completely agree. This There's was nothing going for it. This was because. All um, right. <laughs> we're just bagging on this movie. Yeah, maybe we should. Uh, maybe we should be a bit nicer. Um, Matt, before we get into the plot, I, I don't know if you have the uh, numbers there, but do you want to have a guess what the budget was for this movie? I do have the numbers there, actually. Oh. But... <laughs> Go on. I am prepared for once. You, usually, usually, Carrie reads this, and I'm uh, vastly underprepared. Well, I mean, yeah. what you want me to read it off the screen? <laughs> no, but yeah, twenty bill budget, and then six point eight million at the box office, which is so. Uh, a th- oh, sorry, I was just, which is not so good. On, the, on its first weekend. It opened at number twelve uh, domestically in the US and made two point three million. Number twelve. Wonder what else. It opened that at number twelve, and this is Christmas week as well. So it's like it's not. There's usually yeah. a few movies, but I don't think twelve blockbuster movies are coming out at Christmas. Usually, you get three, like one, two, or three. Yeah. Um, and uh, mo- Christmas time at the movies is a massive thing out in the States. I know that because... Oh, well, yeah, we... Daddy's we home, We both have too. a lot of Jewish friends that... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all of them say that the only thing they do on Christmas is get Chinese food and go to the movies. I'm, tr- I'm trying to... I'm having a look now what the other movies were out. Okay, I, I've... Um... Domestic box office for December 1994. Okay. So, number one for December was The Santa Claus. Number okay, two. solid. Yeah, was um, Dumb and Dumber. Disclosure was number three. Yep. Drop Zone was number four. Star Trek Generations, number five. Street Fighter, number six. Junior, number seven. The Lion King came in at number eight. Um, number nine was Little Women, and number ten was Interview with the Vampire. Right, so there's some dog shit movies on that list, and this was still number twelve. Yeah, no, that was top ten for the entirety of December. So I don't. That's not this week <laughs> at all. But I'm trying to find Mixed Nuts now. Mixed Nuts came at came in at number twenty five for the entirety of December, and then. Miracle on 34th Street was above it. Pulp Fiction was above it. The Jungle Book was above it. I think this is a Jungle Book 1994. Yes, it is. Yeah, so they'll be at the end of their cinema runs as well. Yeah. So this this Jungle (laughs) Book... Sorry, I'm going off on another tangent here. This was the first first live-action remake of The Jungle Book, followed by a live-action remake of The Jungle Book in... 2016 and in 2016 what's sorry what there's a live action version in the 90s yeah and... B- oh. both done by uh, w- uh walt disney and um in the 2016 version blue is played by bill murray yes and in the 1994 version blue is played by bill murray's brother fun fact ah and that's all i know that's about just fact that's all I know about Jungle Book 1994. Well, you did more than me because I didn't even know that was a movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> should, should, should we get into the plot of this movie? You sure you don't want to fill out this podcast a little bit more before we run through this five-minute plot? <laughs> um, no, I think we're all good right. to go. I'll get into it. Yeah, this this isn't going to be a long one. This is just because I'm reading the plot here. It's like eight paragraphs. You could half that. Oh. And even still, most of the paragraphs are like two-minute scenes. 
yeah. Sake, when we read through this earlier, I think you read read for a longer amount of time an actual scene went on. I genuinely think it did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right, we'll get going. We'll get going. So, in a coastal California town on Christmas Eve, ex-con Felix is seen running from his angry pregnant wife, Gracie. As she chases him down the road, he accidentally runs into and damages a Christmas tree being carried by two rollerbladers. When an argument breaks out among them, a stranger, Philip, unsuccessfully attempts to calm them down. They soon disperse. Yeah. So, so yeah, introduction. that's pretty much it. You're open into the movie? Yeah, this is the introduction. Um, Felix is played by Anthony LaPaglia, and Gracie is played by Juliet Lewis. And we're introduced to their characters along with uh, Steve Martin's character of Philip. And the whole conflict that introduces everybody together is um felix breaks a christmas tree yeah so i didn't mind the opening to this just with the the white christmas opening with yeah. the um, classic obviously it's in california so it's still quite sunny still quite nice weather and steve martin's just riding his bike around town but then yeah, yeah we're quickly introduced to the two characters who just kick off a lot of shit and yeah, <laughs> one of these um, rollerbladers is played. What's his name? What's his name? I can't remember his John name. Stewart. John Stewart. Yeah, John Stewart's one of the rollerbladers. So yeah, one in this movie. Which, if you didn't read that on the Wikipedia cast, you would have absolutely no idea. No, <laughs> you can't tell it's him. It um, but it it feels like one of the rollerbladers should have been Alan Covert. That would, that would have been a oh that would have been perfect but yeah. i guess this is a steve martin movie so yeah this but is fair. alan covert as a rollerblader that's my uh dream cast for this movie if we were to re- reboot this doesn't he rollerblade something. in a different movie am i making that up is it in like is it in big daddy or something when it's the reporter no in in big daddy they go to the park because he's like a, he does all kinds of stuff in Big Daddy. Cause he's like a dog walker, and he's like no, he dressed in, up as a woman. In or Big no, Daddy, or he's, a robber. Big Daddy, he's the lawyer. He's one of the gay lawyers. Oh, sorry, not Big Daddy. I'm thinking of um, Mr. Deeds. Oh, yeah. Where he just dresses up as all the different roles because he's like um, the news guy's little bitch, and yeah. then he just gets the shit kicked out of him. Yeah, that's that. But in yeah. Big Daddy, they go to the park, Central Park. And oh, yeah. Yeah, J- Julian is just throwing <laughs> sticks as the rollerbladers are coming down the hill. <laughs> That's one of the best parts of that movie. <laughs> I love that film. And maybe we'll get to in a few weeks a much better movie than this. Oh, well, you know. All right. Everything's going to. Everything's going up from here. But yeah, okay. Um, Literally, as soon as after this week, we have some like good movies. We spoke about this before, though. We have like a good movie. Three weeks of shit, a good movie. Two weeks of shit, a good movie, a good movie. Four weeks of shit, <laughs> and then it never recovers. <laughs> so we've got we've got a few good movies dotted in there to keep us going, keep the hope. <laughs> we, Matt, we have to fucking talk about Joe Dirt Two down the line. Hey, <laughs> well, you all have no sass about Joe Dirt franchise. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, right. back, back back to mixed nuts. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, so they soon disperse. So Philip, head of the suicide prevention hotline Lifesavers, receives an eviction notice from his landlord Stanley after being unable to pay the organization's rent for several months. In addition to him, the hotline is staffed by the selfish, neurotic, and rather fearful office manager, Mrs. Blanche Munchnick, and the overly emotional and empathetic supervisor, Catherine O'Shaughnessy. Philip, who does not want to inform his co-workers of the eviction, attempts to convince his girlfriend, Susan, a loan officer at a local bank, to grant him a small loan. She refuses the loan before telling him that she has been secretly dating a psychiatrist for four months and is breaking up with him. Yeah. So we get Philip. He's uh, confronted by his landlord as soon as he moves into the building. Uh, um, his landlord is a bit of a bit of a dick. Yeah. And he's just basically he's, told him... Gary Shanlin. He, uh, yeah, Gary Shandling here was in another movie. Yeah, you have Gary Shandling last week or was it the week before? 
No, G- G- Gary Shandlin has been in anything yet, has he? We've had. I'm sure we've had a Gary Shandlin. No, we we haven't done Iron Man two. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the Winter Soldier. <laughs> um, no. Um, the night we never met. Love it. No, Mixed Nuts is his third movie. Oh, okay. And then his next movie is Doctor Doolittle in 1998, where he plays Mill Mil Pigeon. Hmm. Could have sworn I've done, we've done a Gary Shandlin. No, no Gary no, Shandlin. No. no Gary Shandlin. And then, yeah. Get... No Michael McKean this week. Um, Stanley, yeah, no Michael McKean. I was hoping for three in a row. <sighs> the dream. But yeah, um, Gar- Gary Shandlin's uh, character, Stanley, hands Philip the eviction notice, and he's basically like, get out of my, my building. You can't afford to pay rent. So go. And then, yeah, in, in the office, we're introduced to um, Rita Wilson as uh, Catherine and Madeline Kahn as uh, Mrs. Blanche Munchnick. And as we're introduced to them, they're, they're on the phone to people who've rung up this uh, life support hotline and they're just having conversations with them. And Mrs. Blanche Munchnick, Munchnick she's like, oh... <laughs> Why are you worried about Janet? And the guy on the phone's like, I'm not worried about Janet. I'm worried about the planet. And then she's like, oh, just tap tap the phone. You're breaking up kind of thing. And then, yeah, Catherine's just getting too um, too connected to these people over the phone because she's a caring person, I guess. Yeah. Out, out of everybody the in this you movie. probably would want in this office. <laughs> yeah. She's just, uh, yeah, she gets t- too connected to the whole uh, situation. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's all I have to say. I've got <laughs> you anything else? Uh, I've got a few notes, but um, something about a fruitcake. Oh, yeah. So Mrs. Blanche Munchnick, she goes to leave after her work is done. And then. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then the fruitcake. he gives her a fruitcake and she's like, ah, oh, fruitcake. Kind of looks like the fruitcake I gave you last year. <laughs> I've so, just got my note here as regifting a fruitcake. From you, how long does how long can fruitcake? I don't last? know. Yeah, does just just what is fruitcake? Does it last? Is it just Christmas pudding? Like, I think it's um, is it like a panettone? Like, what is this? I think it's like a Christmas pudding kind of thing. Um. Yeah, so oh, the fucking. U.S. Department of Agriculture <laughs> says that the fruitcake will last two to three months in a refrigerated without spoiling and will maintain oh, its so quality if stored up to a year in the freezer. Oh, So he probably just froze it. Frozen fruitcake. Yeah. Here's your gift back. And then, yeah, as Mrs. Blanche Munchnick, Munchnick leaves, she gets trapped in the lift, but that, that comes later she, on. She just gets, She just gets stuck in the lift. That's but, my absolute next no. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that uh, Philip rung, rung his girlfriend, didn't he? What, what happened to you? Philip rung his girlfriend. Oh, so, yeah. So what happens is he calls her and he's like, oh, can you help me out with a small $5,000 loan so we can pay rent? She's like, my psychiatrist thinks uh, we should break up. And he's like, I didn't know you were seeing a psychiatrist. Yeah, I've been having sex with him for the last four months. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> probably the best uh, line of. <laughs> oh, okay. So, what's her name? This woman. What's the name of the girlfriend? Blanche. Oh, oh, Susan. Susan. So Susan is played by Jolie Fisher. Guess who she's related to? Jolie Fisher. Jolie. Lawrence Fisher. Fishburne. No. Not Lawrence Fisher. Um, <laughs> Fisher, the DJ Fisher. DJ Fisher, that's D- DJ. You know, like Fisher, the Australian guy. Fisher Price, is that who you're talking about? No, she's no, um, a DJ. She's half sister to um, Carrie Fisher. No way. Yeah, that's and pretty cool. I I don't know if you know this, but Carrie Fisher. She is an uncredited writer on a movie we're doing in a couple of weeks. 
Really? Yeah. That's a little bit of sizzle there for you. Ooh, a slow burn, eh? Okay, well, you're going to pull that uh, out of the trivia bag when, you, when we're on that yep. movie. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> All right, I won't, I won't look it up in the meantime, then. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, let, let, let's move on. <laughs> All right, let's move on with some plot, eh? Let's get some more um, semblance of plot that's in this movie. Despite Catherine's expectation that Christmas time would bring multiple crises to solve, the staff has received few calls. There is one phone call from a woman who is frightened by a notorious Los Angeles serial killer dubbed the Seaside Strangler. And another from Chris, a trans woman, who feigns depression to convince Philip to disclose the Lifesaver's office address. Meanwhile, an elevator malfunction leaves Miss Munchnik trapped on her way to Christmas Eve dinner, Philip eventually manages to pull her to the top of the elevator when Gracie arrives and attempts to operate it. They are terrified that they will be crushed by the ceiling of the elevator shaft, but eventually they are all managed to return to the office. That one paragraph is like, what, 35 minutes of plot? That is like, yeah. That, that. So the first two paragraphs have been like 30 seconds. That's yep. like half the movie. <laughs> So, so yeah, yeah, what um, we get here is we get people calling in. Um, a we obviously of get calls. the yeah the the, the, the repeated edition of the um, the seaside strangler. I think this is like the second or third time it's brought up. Yep. Um, and we, yeah, we, so we just have this like ominous off-screen serial killer that's supposedly around in the area, and people are quite terrified. Then we get a second phone call from. A gentleman who wants to kill himself, but the phone lines break and he's holding a gun. So he's in a phone booth with his gun. And then uh, Catherine's yeah. like, she just the phone's breaking up. So he's like, oh, just, what did you say? Tap it, just tap it, tap it. Yeah, just tap, like, tap the receiver or tap something on the phone. Just give it yeah. a little, like, you know, percussive maintenance. And then she's like, just tap it, tap it, tap it. And the guy on the phone takes this as he should shoot himself in the head. So he shoots himself in the head, I'm guessing. Then the phone hangs up. And then Steve Martin's character, Philip, is like, oh, if it's a proper emergency, he'll ring back. Don't worry about it. And then <laughs> and then the camera just lingers on the phone for like five five seconds. And oh, it's implied it, it's implied that it's not an important phone call, but the guy on the other end has just killed himself. He's not calling back. Nope. <laughs> then we get, get another gentleman uh, ringing up. And he's like, oh, it's my last Christmas. It's my last Christmas. Can I speak to a woman? And then Catherine jumps on the phone. And then he's like, oh, God, the things I want to do to you. Blah, blah. It, it's like he's ringing the uh, adult sex lines rather than suicide prevention. Yeah, he just wants to speak to any woman so he can just... <laughs> jack it. Jack some weird shit. Yep. And jack off under his coat. But, but then the third phone call we get here... As Matt said, we are introduced to Chris, a trans woman who is having a Christmas party at the family house. And then um, she's just super sad. So she just wants to come to the suicide prevention center, phone call center place, just to have a chat and hang out with them for Christmas. And then Steve Martin finally yeah, gives out the address. Uh... Yeah? No, no, okay, go on. So, yeah, Steve Martin gives out the address, and then th this is um, my favorite scene of the movie. Because Chris, at this point, decides to leave the house, and as she's leaving the house, um, the family is singing 12 Days of Christmas, and then her dad's like, oh, where are you going, Arnold Schwarzenegger? And then she's like, Dad, I hate it when you call me Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then the whole family in unison just start chatting. Arnold, 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 <laughs> Arnold. And then as she storms out the door, the family just go back to singing 12 Days of Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Well, we'll leave Schreiber, I think he'll look nice. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we do we have Chris, it's a trans woman played by Leave Schreiber in his first role, which is really fucking impressive because he's actually probably he does really he's well in this. He's probably the best actor 
in this movie. Not the best yeah, part I think of he this the movie, best. but he's no, he's the best actor, and this is he's the, the reason... most he's the best acted role. Yeah, yeah, and this is the reason he is so successful in the Scream franchise and X Men Oranges Wolverine. And what else is Ray he Donovan? Ray Donovan. That's all. I... Yeah, he's in Ray Donovan for like eight years. Yeah. <laughs> TV's... Oh, you know, he's Leif Schreiber. He's in loads of random stuff, but I couldn't yeah. tell you what he's off the top of my head. Oh, he's random, but he he's in a he's in a movie called Hitler: The Rise of Evil, which we watched in GCSE history when we learned about Nazi Germany. Like, is it a factual thing, or is it like a? Yeah, it's factual. Just okay. It's not like when you're in Latin and you watch fucking Troy. No. It, I, I remember it being quite good. Um, <laughs> probably not on, on his thing. Oh, he's in The Simpsons in 2019. Hitler, the right... He was Ernst... Oh, That's... I can't say that. Ernst... Hans he's got a very distinct Hans look. Him. Yeah. He he looks uh, like he could Stavro be a Stavro Blofeld. Guy. And Robert Carlyle was Hitler. That, I remember that being quite a good movie. Really? Robert Carlyle was Hitler? Yeah. I, He'd I, be really good in that role. I, I remember really enjoying this when we were watching it in school. Really enjoying it. I'm going to watch that again. But, but yeah, leave try. But I remember we watched Downfall in German. That was pretty good. Did, did you ever watch Le Corres in... French? No, we watched La Haine. Oh. La Haine? La Haine? It was called The Hate. It's about like the ghettos in France. That's a fucking sick movie as well. Oh. Didn't yeah. have a didn't have a Scooby Doo what was going on. <laughs> Great. We, we, yeah, we, we watched the chorus and this guy he sings a song about wiping his ass or something. And I, I remember the whole class was laughing, but nobody understood the song. So we were just laughing at the subtitles. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> nice. Oh, to be fucking 13 in French again. Jesus Christ. Uh, God, French? This movie is based on a French book or whatever. This movie is based on a French something or other. So, you know, what? it all comes full circle. Yeah. So we still... Lapierre Noël est... In a, in order. Okay. Fuck knows. But after this, yeah. Okay. Mrs. Munchkin's trapped in the Moving lift. Moving on. And then a guy with dogs walks. Mrs. Munch Munchkin is trapped in the lift. Yeah, and one of the neighbors who has a bunch of dogs walks past. And then they're arguing. And she's like, ah, those dogs gave me rabies, and then he's like, you don't have rabies, you either have rabies or you don't have rabies, there's no in between. <laughs> there's no almost having rabies. Yeah, and then for the second time on this podcast, it's implied that this guy fucks his dog. Yeah, for the second time in a few weeks that there's some uh, <laughs> dog <fuck it. laughs> some dog loving going on. Yeah. Fuck's sake. <laughs> But yeah, um, Gracie then comes to the uh, building where where the offices are, and she tries to go up in the lift, and the lift works. And then yes, Mrs. Munchkin's just she like her. presses the lift. Yeah, and then they yeah like she's obviously trying to get out, so she gets taken out of the lift. And then Steve Martin's holding on, and this whole big action sequence. But turns out everybody's safe because. Yeah, they think they're going to get crushed by the lift, but no, everyone's fine. And then every, yeah, everyone's everyone just everyone's chilling in the office. Then done, done. <laughs> Let's move on. Fucking hell! So we get Felix arriving, beg begging Gracie to listen to him, and she hits him in the head with the fruit cake, and basically just knocks him clean out. Yep, uh, concussing him causes a large cut on his forehead. Philip and Catherine take him to a veterinarian to be treated for his head wound. While the doctor is distracted discussing relationships and pillows with Philip, Felix steals and quickly overdoses on dog tranquilizers and is taken to a hospital. 
so yeah they take him to the vets and obviously i don't know why he doesn't take him to the doctor anyway but they want to do it i guess undercover a bit so he takes him to his friend the vet and yeah. the vet is just all he wants to talk about is pillows and going to sleep or some shit yeah and while that's going on he just gives him a bottle of pills and he just goes to town and takes all of them and just collapses in the corner yeah pretty much and whilst the, before all this even happened Catherine has found out that they're getting evicted from the building somehow oh because of the christmas present swapping yeah he, he gives her he gives her a present but accidentally passes yeah. her the eviction notice as well so ages ago Catherine and now that eviction notice is in the office so that that'll come yeah. back in like two seconds but yeah the vet here is played by uh rob reiner who again very famous actor very famous director directed um sleepless in seattle and princess the uh, princess bride i think yeah 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 so he directed stand by me uh when harry met sally yeah lords sleepless in so seattle. much stuff yeah yeah loads of stuff but i think most people uh this day and age will know him as jess's dad from new Girl. <laughs> I've never seen New Girl, so uh, that's lost on me. But... Oh, you should watch New Girl, honestly. What's that? Is that what Dewey De- Zoe Deschanel? Is Zoe Deschanel one? and bloody Peter B. Parker. I think you'll enjoy it. It's very funny. I, th- I, I reckon I've probably seen a couple episodes on E4 or something. Yeah, oh, 100%. After school, E4. Oh. Yeah, so... <laughs> Rob Reiner also did this as Spinal Tap and yep. the Bucket List and oh. a few good men. Question. Okay. Again, tangent. Yeah. When do you think the term Bucket List was created? I I know it from movies. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure I've only heard it, or like first heard it in movies. I'm pretty sure it was before the movie The Bucket List though. If you had to hazard a guess, when do you think the term bucket list would have come into come into existence? Well, fuck, because kick the bucket is quite like an old phrase, right? Yeah. So your bucket list has got to be somewhat old, but also fucking 80s, I don't know. The bucket list, the term the bucket list. Oh, you're going to tell me it's from the movie now. It's from you? the movie. <laughs> fuck off. That term did not exist before the movie The Bucket List. I don't know if I believe that. I promise I'm you. Not this. <laughs> Honestly, it's it's been a whole thing this last week, and nobody believes it. But people have gone to like Google Scholar, Google Books, like scoured history, and this term does not pop up anywhere before this movie. I don't know. <laughs> Just, you, you know what i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to do my own research yeah i don't but, know about this but the i mean fact, the fact that the movie this is came classic out. like these experts i'm just gonna disagree with them because i know better <laughs> but fuck no i'm not having i'm fucking not having this i'm dying on this hill i'll find one uh but yeah <laughs> it, it's, it's been a big uh big thing of contention on the internet this week is this like the new wheels fucking or doors yeah. I saw a better one than that, which was Windows or Doors, and I thought that was way more. Windows has to be because some doors have windows. Yeah, can... some doors do have windows. Some windows are doors. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I reckon windows. Um, but yeah. Let, also, let... if anyone doesn't know, Rob Ryder is he's he's um uh, the dad in Wolf of Wall Street. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah. He's, it, um, he's, he's been in loads. He, he's yeah, been in so, so, much, so much. But yeah, he, he's talking about pillows. He's like, I, I don't get it. She's, my wife, she has so many pillows on the bed. Before we go to sleep, we got to take them all off. In the morning, we got to put them all back on. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, I agree with. Any girl, every girl has like fucking 30 pillows on a bed. And it's just no need. Absolutely no fucking need. I have. Uh, oh, it looks nice. Oh yeah, you know what? It doesn't look nice when there's forty pillows on the fucking floor, does it? I have six pillows Jesus. on uh, on my bed. You have six pillows. Yeah. Out of six pillows, what do you do with them? 
Um, so two on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what fucking use are they? Uh, no, I have a look. Yeah. One, two. I did have seven, but I have to throw my V pillow just because it was a bit dirty. Your what? My body pillow. Your V pillow? Yeah, it's like a big V. So Be for fucking virgin. It, it goes around your neck. <laughs> what? And then I've I had go... a body pillow before, and it was just a big, like, it was just a, like a log. Yeah, uh, they're different. And then I oh, got a, okay. then I got a lovely uh, Welsh dragon pillow that I took to uni. Because of course you do. If you're a Welsh guy in an English uni, you've got to have a something to show that you're Welsh. <laughs> you've got to let everyone know. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Welsh flag up, Welsh pillow, Welsh towel, lovely. Pet sheep. Yeah. I had a pet sheep for my... Uh, <laughs> I, I was in uni, uni for like four days, and it was my birthday, and my flatmates first year, first thing they got me was uh, inflatable sheep. Nice. Of course I was it like, did. I was like, Classic, freshest week banter. I was like, you fuckers don't even know me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. But yeah, move on. And then yeah, so Felix he takes a load of uh the uh, dog tranquilizer and just <laughs> goes into a K-hole pretty much. <laughs> He's fucked it, yeah. Ah oh, fuck, I've got so many notes here that I just don't know what is going on. My notes uh... clearly made sense when I wrote them. Cause Oh, what is it? Is we she, like Catherine has like a breakdown when she finds out that they're getting evicted, and she yeah. goes and sits in the bath and just has a full pep talk with herself. Yep. And she's basically like, just the dog in in the kitchen with everything on fire. Me, just like, well, <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> uh, she just basically sits herself in the bath, has a breakdown, and just decides, oh, it is what yeah. it is, and then just fucking carries on. She she does that like three times in this movie. Just goes into the bathroom for a breakdown. It's fucking great. And then what we get is this. I can't remember if I'm jumping back and forth on it. We are big or time because oh fuck it. <laughs> oh, that's Rob Reiner. Okay, all right. So we're at the hospital and he's yeah. overdosing. And so meanwhile, at the office, the doorbell rings. Gracie quickly throws the door open, accidentally sm- striking Miss Munchnik and revealing that Chris in the doorway. Mm-hmm. Gracie leaves Chris to care for the unconscious Miss Munchnik. When Philip returns, Chris is sitting on the sofa and convinces Philip to dance with her. When Miss Munchnik awakens, she witnesses the dancing and use and threatens to sue Philip for withholding information of the eviction and for inappropriate office behavior. And then she leaves. Yeah. So yeah. But if while like- we get that, uh, Chris's character is Leave Schreiber, the trans lady who turns up and is just like, "Oh, I'm here now. Let me in." Yeah. Uh, they don't want to, and then Gracie's like, oh, fuck it. I don't care. So she invites her in, and we get a good little dance scene. Yeah. But Mrs. Munchnik, Munchnik is knocked out. But Yeah, when... she gets, like, clean knocked out. Gracie leaves, and I feel like there's a whole other plot point here. But where did she go? I can't remember. I've got no idea. She says, Gracie leaves Chris to take yeah, care. Yeah. So... I think Gracie goes back to her. Oh, no. She, she leaves Chris to take care of the yeah. conscious lady. And then she goes back to her shop or something. Fuck, yeah. Because she's, like, pregnant as all hell. Yeah. So, like, she doesn't really go any, like a lot of places. I think she goes back to her house or her shop or something. And then, yeah. A whole bunch of stuff happens. Fuck, I've got... I, I don't know. I... Oh, because we're also... So at this point, we're led to believe that, like, Leave Schreiber's character is also the Seaside Strangler. Because they, they call him when the thing's just off the radio, and it's like, oh, who is this, like, creepy person that's going to turn up and just, like, wants to fucking know where we live? Yes. So I think it's, like, alluded to, like, a little bit. So we're like, ooh, is this trans lady going to come murder everybody? Okay, I think I, <laughs> I think I got you. 
Yeah, yeah. No, because it's I've just got a note here. It says Seaside Strangler question mark. And then the next thing's Leave Schreiber. So like there's a <laughs> phone call that when he's on the phone, he's like it's like alluded to because they're just talking about it. Right. Okay. Yeah. We've already missed Adam Sandler in his ukulele though. Yeah, he, he pops up once as the Yeah, when in. she's in stuck in the lift. Yeah, and that's where he mentions that he prints t shirts and he sings a song. Yeah. And she tries to throw that fruitcake at him and just misses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we've met Adam Sandler's character twice here. Yeah, yeah. So once when but Mrs. He... Bunch Nick was in the lift and he just comes in with his yeah. headphones and he's singing. And then again, as Philip and Catherine are leaving the building with Felix to go to the hospital, he comes out and he starts singing on his ukulele. Yeah. Do you remember what he, he sings? Just old. He's like, he does his like the first musical number. Right? He's like, "Hello, Catherine, how are you?" <laughs> Something like that. And that, something like that. Yeah, that, that's his Cause, whole. Because she gets all, cause she gets all dressed up, eh? Yeah. You look so pretty today. <laughs> And, that, and that's his entire so character funny. throughout the movie. That's literally his character is just putting on that little high pitched gibberish voice and doing and just playing the ukulele. That's all he does for the whole movie, uh, and it's the best part of the movie. Yeah, hundred percent. I could. Yeah, he is. Um, wait. So, oh, we missed. We missed a line further on, which had the the title of the movie in it. Oh yeah. Um, it's Friday near the start, and Steve Martin's like, "Oh yeah, well, my dad died. He got hit by a truck carrying f- full of mixed nuts, <laughs> and in every pothole there is hope." Is the uh, the um, the inspirational line? Yeah, from, like, suicide Cause, hotline. Because if you remove the T and move the remove the L or whatever, yeah, and one of the O's, <laughs> yeah, and you get hope. <laughs> If you rearrange it, fuck's sake. But yeah, right, so um, you got Felix escaping from hospital as well. Yep. Yeah. Felix escaped from hospital. Steve Martin comes back to the office and he has the whole dance number with Chris. Yeah. And then, yeah, so he obviously like doesn't want to. And then, yeah. She wants to go out for a drink or something. Or they want, she wants, she wants to go somewhere and then he doesn't want to go. Yeah. And then they end up dancing. She's like, the only way I'll leave is if you dance with me or something. Yeah. And then they end up having this sexy little dance. There, there was an interview. And I, I only saw the title. It was with like Jimmy Kimmel. And the vi- video title was like, it was an interview with Lee Schreiber. And it was like, Steve Martin once got me hard or whatever. <laughs> and, it, and it was a picture of these two in this movie. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> um, but yeah. Fuck so. <laughs> All right. So soon Gracie, Catherine, and a downstairs neighbor named Louis Capshaw all return to the office with Chinese food. Yep. Meanwhile, after getting her car fixed by the car club, Blanche encounters the fruitcake again as it has landed and crashes through her windshield <laughs> after Philip has a fit and throws it out of the office window. She is distraught, sitting on her car bumper as a fellow neighbor, Mr. Lobel, walks up to her with his three dogs in tow. Lobel comforts her, and Munchnik realizes that she has loved Lobel for a long time. Together, they flee to the beach and have sex in the lifeguard's office. So, yeah, th- this is like another half hour of the movie. This the scene, the scene in the apartment over Chinese food takes so long. And it is... Which, huh? I, I don't even have any recollection of this. What the fuck? So, what is this? Um, Gracie and Catherine come back with Chinese food, and then Adam Sandler's character Louis. Louis. Yeah, is that his name? Louis. Um, he's downstairs, and he's like, "Oh, can I come up as well?" And then they all go up, and then they have like a dressing up montage kind of thing where everybody dresses in nice clothes and they all end up matching like Catherine's in this lovely red dress Steve Martin's character's in this nice tuxedo oh yeah and then Adam Sandler's got his little 
um, schoolboy outfit cap thing on. And then the yeah. ne- next five minutes is just Adam Sandler singing a song that he's written for Catherine around the table. They have no Steve Martin. No, they haven't had the uh, conversation yet. Um, but yeah, they're around the table, and Adam Sandler again is just singing the same song from earlier in this stupid voice, like, "Oh, Catherine, I love you so much. Do you want to make me blush?" Kind of thing. I yeah. those aren't the lyrics, but they're close enough to uh, something that could have fooled me. <laughs> it, it, it's in that ballpark, and then <laughs> Steve Martin, uh, Philip's getting kind of jealous, so he just kicks off, and then yeah, he heals the fruit kick out the window, and it just comes crashing down onto Miss uh, Mrs. Blanche Munchnick's car, and completely destroys it. <laughs> Yeah, just completely smashes the windscreen in half and she just has like a little breakdown. Yeah. It's so funny. And, the, and then as she's having the breakdown, the guy from earlier with the dogs who she said is a dog fucker comes up to him and then she, yeah. she's talking about her dead husband or whatever and then they just end up... Yeah, yeah he says yeah. he says something like to her and she's like, oh, it's what my dead husband used to say. Yeah, and then she realizes that since her husband passed that she's started to like this neighbor and now she's finally ready yeah. to take the leap and then yeah they end up having then sex bang on the beach yeah they have sex on the beach so i've just realized why this is so like back and forth and it's because this wikipedia um like the plot synopsis the plot is absolutely shocking like it just completely misses so much of the movie <laughs> Like, listen to this next paragraph and tell me if there's anything that you feel like might be missing from here. Okay. Or if they may have just, you know, skipped over it. Uh, so they have sex in the... Ba- in uh, uh, Lifeguard's office, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, an hour later, Felix arrives at the office brandishing a gun, having escaped from the hospital. Chris gets shot in the foot after attempting to disarm him. Crazy takes the gun and shoots wildly around the office to empty a bit of the ammunition. Two shots go through the door, killing Stanley having been there, called by Catherine to fix the elevator. Who was standing, sorry, Stanley, who was standing behind with a bag of his possessions. The sight of dead Stanley puts Catherine in shock. Philip prepares to bath, bathe her to calm down to confess his love. And then they fuck in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what, what, what's missing there? Like, they're just, what else is everybody else doing? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, this guy gets shot, and then they just go in the bathroom and start having sex. Yeah, like, does, all right. Does that happen? <laughs> does that happen after Stanley gets shot? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it is after he gets shot because that does make sense. That she like faints. Yeah. Yes, it is. So yeah, um, and she got and Felix arrives and he's gone a bit psycho with his gun. Shoots yeah. Chris in and the then... foot, and then Chris. Adam yes. Sandler's character takes Chris into the next room to sort that out and care for yeah. her. Mm. Then, as this is happening, then, Gracie takes so, the gun. So, yeah, great. Gracie takes the gun, yeah. And just starts shooting anywhere. Two bullets go through the yeah, door. Yeah, so they're like, you need to empty the empty the gun. So yeah. she just shoots all the, all the bullets in random directions. <laughs> yes. And then, yeah, two go through the door. And so, yeah, she shoots the landlord through the door. Kills Stanley. Then Catherine faints. Steve Martin takes her into the yeah. bathroom to calm her down. And then... One of my, I think what my favourite part of this, this whole scene, maybe one of the whole movie, is... <laughs> um, but, like, she shoots all the bullets and then Steve Martin takes the gun off her and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And then they, like, look at the door. So they go to open the door after it's just been knocked on. The body like falls in and he like looks at the gun, turns around, <laughs> walks back to Gracie, wipes all his fingerprints <laughs> off it and then just puts the gun back in her hand and like wraps her hand all the way around it. Oh. <laughs> it's like, fuck this. I ain't getting charged for this. That is your gun and you shot it. See you later. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, like what the fuck? Yeah. And and then yeah, fucking hell. 
all of them are just doing shit. And then, yeah, F- Philip and Catherine are in the bathroom, and then Philip asks for consent. Even though this is a weird place to have sex with her for the first time. But they both say <laughs> so that strange. they both say that they love each other and then they make love in the bathroom. Yeah. They do. Go out in the bathroom. Okay. So then meanwhile this is happening, Chris yep. takes the one sided interest in Louis and attempts to flirt with him. Yeah. Louis reprises his earlier appearance and sings impromptu songs on his prized ukulele. Gracie and Felix disguise Stanley's body as a Christmas tree with the burlap sacks and some super glue the decision is made to take it and the bag to the boardwalk and leave it there yeah. so yeah they come out the bathroom and realize that they've just basically dressed this guy up in some hessian sacks and have stuck some fake christmas tree twigs to him and now he looks like a tree yeah, which is fantastic <laughs> fucking hell but yeah again um, uh, then adam sandler's doing his same thing Again, but this time he's singing to Chris, who fancies Adam Sandler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Adam Sandler <laughs> is a very talented musician. And you I... do love Adam Sandler's music. <laughs> okay, so we find out that Chris, Chris's gunshot is just an actual scratch to the foot. It didn't go through it, just kind of grazed. Yeah. And so Adam Sandler's like, oh, do you want... um?" Do you want this kind of truck? Do you want these? Do you want these painkillers? Do you want these, these, and these? And so he's like, okay, I'll get you this. And then he walks back into the room like, this is just real soul. And he walks back in and he just has his, this entire tray of just random drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but he only walks in with it for like a second and then walks straight back out. It's fucking great. I, I think this is the part of the movie where I ended up on my laptop. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> and then, yeah. So there's just nothing else really happens to me. I mean, I was very pleased with the um, the fact that they don't get away with the Christmas tree thing. Like they just go outside yeah. with the body and just immediately get rumbled. Yeah. So yeah, they decide. To so yeah, we get the Christmas tree down to the boardwalk. Mrs. Blanche Munchnick and the dog guy join them. And then the rollerbladers pop up. Again, yeah, so she. Yeah, so Blanche is like, "Where the fuck are you taking my Christmas tree? Like, that's yeah. that's all of our Christmas trees. You can't just take it." And they're like, "Okay, well, no, no, this is ours. We'll sort it out." And then we get the return of the rollerbladers from the start of the movie, looking to fuck up the tree. Yeah, and then as they mess up the tree, it gets hit to the floor. Yeah, so we get Felix tosses the tree yeah. and it crashes to the ground, revealing Stanley's body. Uh, then, so the police arrive. Philip falsely confesses to the killing, but Gracie pulls out the gun as proof of a <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, he's like, "Fuck, okay, I guess I'm taking the rap for this. Like, I'm holding the body. Like, oh shit." And then she just is like, "Oh no, wait, look, it's the murder weapon." <laughs> yeah. And just yeah. pulls out this gun in front of the cops. I, I remember this, but um. Felix grabs it and runs to the roof of a nearby building. Um, he threatens to commit suicide. And I guess the only uh, overarching thing of this is that they work at an anti-suicide thing. So Philip does actually manage to convince him not to kill himself. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Which I guess is the only bit of connectivity in this plot. Um, Catherine hands Stanley's bag to the detectives. And they basically... So Stanley is obviously the murdered landlord who is currently dressed up as a christmas tree yeah um they they search for the they search through the bag and find the fishing line and kelp the weapons of choice for the seaside strangler dun 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 so big reveal the landlord is actually the seaside strangler Woo. fantastic <laughs> so in in the most unbelievable part of this movie we get to basically the end and so now that it turns out that she's just murdered a serial killer Instead of anything happening, oh, here's, here's your $250,000 reward. Yay! We have a happy ending. <laughs> yeah. So this is where we get the end of the movie. We get, she basically wins two hundred and fifty grand, and they're like, oh, can we have five grand to uh, help pay all the debts off? And <laughs> at first she's like, fuck no. But <laughs> she's like, oh, I guess I, guess I can give you the money. Um, she swiftly goes into labor, so she gets double present she gets a baby and the money 
Uh, she delivers the baby in the middle of the street, underneath the Christmas tree, just like the nativity. Yeah. End of movie, what? pretty much. That is end of movie, isn't it? End of movie. That is the end of the movie. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. And then at the end, at the credits, end oh, oh, go on. Go yeah. on. You do it. No. <laughs> At the end credits, Felix, who quits his job to paint murals, was finally commissioned and his career takes off from there. His first commission has him painting everything he told Gracie he would paint once he had a wall. Fantastic. So yeah, he said, you'd be on it, the baby will be on it, I'll be on it, we'll all be on it. And so yeah, that's now on the side of the suicide prevention at the end of the movie. And roll credits. Fantastic. What a wonderful Christmas story. <sighs> I just, I just felt like I had to kind of power through at the end there. That was going yep. nowhere. <laughs> the, yeah, this movie was tough. And then I... Philip and Catherine also decided to get married. Yeah. Nice. An hour after making love for the first time. Yeah. But but they know. Once you know, you know, you know. Yeah. But Once yeah, you know. that's yeah. the movie. But what do you Fucking think? Fucking shy. <laughs> yeah dog shit our famous rating segment come on Kerry okay so how many sandbags out of 10 would you rate this movie I think this was better than going overboard but not as good as Shakes the Clown okay so I give Shakes the Clown a 1.94 and going overboard a 1.26. So I think I'm going to have to give this like a 1.63. Yeah, 1.63. That seems... 1.63. And what f- um, what flood could that stop? Um, You've put me on the spot now because there's not much liquid in this. Uh, <laughs> there's not much liquid in this movie. There was not much liquid in this movie. <laughs> um, my 1.63 sandbags could protect Miss Munchnik's windscreen from <laughs> a fall-in fruit cake. Nice. Yeah. So what did what what rating did I give um, Shakes the Clown? You give Shakes the Clown I think it was a, like a three point something. You give Shakes the Clown a 2.2. 2.2. Okay, yeah. this is getting a solid 1.8. 1.8. You give uh, Going yeah. Overboard a zero. I did give Going Overboard a zero. <laughs> you give Airhead last week a seven. So, yeah. This is closer to Shakes the Clown than it is Going Overboard. Yeah. I I'd completely say. agree. And, Matt, what kind of flood could your 1.8 sandbag stop? It could stop any sort of water getting into that empty bath, empty breakdown bath that Catherine loves. No. So, <laughs> fuck, this was tragic. Yeah, we're not doing well. After this week's ratings, my average score is sitting at a 3.26 and your average rating is sitting at a 3.53. Which is not good well, at all. Well, you know what? Fuck them. It's all uphill from next week. It's what do we uphill. have next week, Carrie? Let the people know. Um, do, wait, before that, do you have any trivia for this movie? Or no? I do. Oh. I do have it. Uh, there was on. one thing, actually, yeah. I, I saw um, one piece of trivia so, that I found interesting, yeah. but that's it. Uh, this is a little out actually, there. But I, so, and, and, yeah, go on. I had two pieces of trivia I want to share. Oh, go nice. on, you, you go first. So, hopefully, we don't have the same one. But, um, so Anthony LaPaglia, he's, uh, Phoenix, is, uh, crazy drunk and Santa in this movie. Yeah. So, he is actually an Australian actor and he, I believe, is like an ex professional football player. Oh, okay. Played for like Sydney FC. So he occasionally plays in Hollywood United, which is an amateur organization of which he is club president, where with other entertainment industry, including Frank LaBeouf, Vinnie Jones, Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols, and a couple of others. So like famous like people that can play sports as well. 
ex Welsh footballer Vinnie Jones. Ex Welsh footballer Vinnie Jones of yeah. Chelsea and Wimbledon fame. <laughs> oh, that's a very, very interesting fact. Notorious football hard man Vinnie Jones turned well, actor. Again, we're, we're doing a Vinnie Jones remake movie next week. Not next week, down the line. I don't know if it's a remake of Mean Machine. What? <laughs> the Longest Yard. It, it is. So I think it, it's a me- remake of The Longest Yard. <laughs> yeah, but The Mean Machine is a remake of The Longest Yard as well. Yeah. So they all exist within the... Uh... But The Longest Yard... <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so they all exist in the same universe. Yeah, nice. but, but they're all the same movie. Okay. They are the exact same movie. But... Yeah, um, two pieces of trivia I've got is all to do with Chris. So Chris Farley was actually offered the role of Chris in this movie. So we could have had three Farley yep. roles on a... on a. That would have been a very different kind of movie. Co- completely different. Completely. Yeah. I, I feel like um, Leave Schreiber did a fantastic job in this movie. And I think Chris Farley would have taken it too much in the other direction. I think, yeah, you would have got two very different um, takes on this role. Yeah, completely different. And although this is Lee yeah. Schreiber's first movie, it's not his first credit because his first credit was in a TV show that aired the night before this movie was released. No way. Yeah. That's pretty good, actually. What was the TV show? I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. That's cool as fuck, though. Yeah. So, but two credits in two days. Go on, like. and he he did a pretty good job. Yeah. Before we wrap up, what what do you think of Adam Sandler's character in this? It was. I think. Well, you know what? I didn't mind him being in this movie, but at the same time, he. Like a lot of the characters in this movie didn't add a lot, but if he took it away, it would probably be probably just a little bit less funny. Yeah. I, I he just plays himself. He just plays Adam Sandler being a moron. Yeah. He, doing he, stupid shit, which he, is like ideal. He plays stupid Sandler, doesn't he? Yeah, that's all he does. And yeah, I, I think it's the best part of the And it movie. works, I guess. Yeah, probably. Right. Matt, it is currently ten to one. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, about yeah, this movie, for you, eh? no, yeah, not at all. Nothing, anything out of the movie, it's just enough. I would never watch this film again, <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely zero out of 10 recommendation for this movie. Don't watch it, it's shit. <laughs> right before we finish up, Matt, do you want to let the people know what we've got next week? We've got some fuck good shit next week, ladies and gentlemen. We finally made it something that everybody might know, other than Billy Madison. We've got Happy Gilmore coming up on the air. Happy on the cards. Yeah, Gilmore. Happy fucking Gilmore. Possibly no. I would say it's in my top ten movies of all time. Oh, okay. I think it's a very special film to me when I was a child and growing up and still to this day. It's just the classic. It's just fantastic. And I'm really hoping when I watch it this week, I don't hate it like you ended up hating Billy <laughs> Madison. <laughs> nah, I don't. Like, I've watched Happy Gilmore a few months ago and it definitely holds up well like, yeah. every time. So. No, it's, it's, it's just iconic. It is. Like, There's a lot. Like, everything about that movie is pretty much iconic at this point. Yeah. I completely agree. It's, it's probably his most iconic movie. Oh, 100%, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't think of anything else that's more iconic. But no, it's such a good movie. But we'll get to that. We'll get there next, next week. week. Yeah. Um, anything else? I did say uh, earlier on, I did want to read out a quick email that we got yeah. from uh, from a fan. So this email, it came through from Kelvin Neal. Okay, like Kevin Nealon, I guess. Okay, so Matt, you ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. 
Hello, dear friend. This is urgent, please. I am Kelvin Neal and I work with United Bank of Africa. Please, can you use ATM Visa card to withdraw money at ATM cash machine in your country? I want to transfer money to you from your country. It's part of money taken by some old politician that was forced out of power. I will change the account details to yours and apply for a Visa card with your details in our bank. They will send you the Visa card and you will be withdrawing money with it and always send my own percentage of the money and the money we're taking about is 10.5 million dollars whatever amount you withdraw daily you will send 60 percent to me and you will take 40 percent the visa card and the bank account will be in your name i will be waiting for your information as soon as possible and he's asked for my name my age my sex my country my occupation and my phone number all right everybody well if you want some free money <laughs> <laughs> So our very first piece of uh, fan mail. Right I hope there. he gave us a fucking five star review at least, a little bastard. <laughs> and um, yeah, so hopefully that uh, ten point five million dollars will help us pay for the distribution and uh, the recording. Did he say what his... currency it's in? Yeah, dollars. So that could be anything. Which, which dollars? It just just said ten point five million dollars. Nice. So let's assume USD. Oh yeah, our very first uh, email, Matt. It's a proud Ooh. moment. Proud yeah, moment. If uh, if you do want to send us an email or a message, um, email us at sosandlerspod at gmail dot com. Uh, tweet us, send us a message on Twitter at sosandlerspod, and follow us on Instagram at sosandlerspod. Apart from that, I think. Uh, we're good to go. Signing off, guys. Yeah. Thank First you during the week of uh, what a fucking great podcast that was. <laughs> I, <laughs> we, we were saying that this was going to be dead, but I, th- I think we've gone for like an hour and a half. Well, I hope people enjoyed listening to us not talk about that movie for an hour and a half. <laughs> See you later, everybody. Thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> Bye.